Hey guys, I'm Theobald Hedman. Welcome to Southern Ingenuity. In this video, I'm going to be making these adjustable positive stops to use on my dividing head. This video is the third in a series where I'm making some customized tools and jigs in preparation for an upcoming project. The project is going to be a specialized tool to help with some of the adjustments that we have to make on the machines where I work. Four of the parts on this tool will have miniature sprockets integrated into their design. There will be 10 teeth per sprocket, so that's 40 teeth that I'm going to have to cut. To cut each tooth, I'll have to rotate the dividing head through an arc that is precisely 216 degrees. I can't overshoot at either end of the arc because doing so will mess up the root diameter of the sprocket and ruin the part. These stops will ensure that I don't overshoot that mark in either direction. Oh, and while making these stops, I had a surprise visitor show up right here in my shop. Now, this guy's known by different names to different people, but I like to call him Lieutenant Dan. So make sure you hang around to see that, and let's get started. I start out by getting a piece of thin sheet metal from the scrap metal pile. Then I cut it down to a manageable size before cleaning it up. The stops will be mounted to the dividing head's direct indexing plate. I measured the outside diameter of the plate and the diameter for the center of the direct indexing holes. This is so that I can determine the radius of each arc that I'm going to have to cut. With the work holding plate secured to the dividing head, I begin setting up the material for machining. I put a piece of 3 8 inch thick aluminum underneath the sheet metal to prevent the cutter from damaging the work holding plate. I had already centered the dividing head with the machine spindle and zeroed the digital readout. Here, I'm using a center drill to lightly scratch the metal along the cutting paths. This is to make sure that I have adequate clearance between the spindle and the work holding clamps. The end mill that I'm going to be using is not a center cutting end mill. So here I'm drilling some pilot holes along the tool path so that I can plunge the cutter through the sheet metal. The center of the first arc that I'll be cutting has a radius equal to the distance between the center of the dividing head and the center of the direct indexing holes. The clamping bolt and guide pin will fit through this slot when connecting the stop to the dividing head. Get in here. Just stay out of the way. Don't get in my way.
The inside edge of this slot has a radius equal to the distance between the center of the dividing head and the outside edge of the direct indexing plate. I left a small section of this slot uncut to help keep the material rigid to reduce vibrations and chatter while cutting the inside arc. With the parts cut out and deburred, I bend one end of each to a 90 degree angle. The parts are then marked and cut for proper clearance. This is the first version of these stops that I tried to make, and I wasn't very happy with them. They were straight instead of curved, and they weren't easily adjustable. They were attached to the plate with two bolts that screwed into a special nut that I had made. The bolts were too close together, and that made it difficult to get the wrench onto each one so that they could be tightened. With the new version, I'm going to install a dowel pin into one of these holes and just use one bolt to secure each clamp. The dowel pin will help align the stop in the correct position as well as prevent the nut from spinning when the bolt is tightened. For better visualization, I'm assembling this on the top side of the plate. When in use, it'll actually be on the bottom side. But as you can see here, the holes in the index plate line up with the curved slot in the stop. 
The bolt and the dowel pin keep the stop aligned with the holes in the plate. This allows the stop to slide easily into the desired position. The direct index locking mechanism is utilized as the fixed position to which the stops will be set. After rotating the dividing head to the desired angular position, the stops are attached to the plate and then touched off against the locking mechanism before tightening the clamping bolt. As you can see here, the stop prevents movement past the desired angular position. This will ensure precise positioning when cutting each tooth of the miniature sprockets for my project. If you'd like to follow along as I make the next few tools and jigs for this project, and then for the project itself, then be sure to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell. And if you enjoyed this video, then please, by all means, click the like button and share it with your friends. So until next time, I'm Theobald Hedman. Thanks for watching Southern Ingenuity.